In this video, I'm going to look at problem solving with speed, distance, and time. In particular, speed, distance, and time problems where you have a change in speed or distance or time. Now, when working with speed, distance, and time, I like to remember the relationship between distance, speed, and time. Now, speed is the rate, and speed is always distance divided by time. And from this speed, you can often see what the units are. So you could see maybe kilometers per hour or meters per second. That, those are going to be the units for distance and for time. Now, time will be distance over speed. And distance is speed times by time. I like using this triangle to remind me about the relationships. So if I'm looking for speed, I cover up the S and I can see that what's left over is distance and time and it makes a fraction. Or if I'm looking for time and I cover up the T, I can see that I'm going to divide distance by speed. And if I want to find distance, that's going to be speed times time. Let's look at an example together. The example says, a family goes away on holiday. They drive at an average speed of 100 kilometers per hour on the trip from their home to their holiday destination. After their holiday, they follow the same route home. Their return trip takes them 24 minutes less since they are able to drive at an average speed of 110 kilometers per hour. How far away is their holiday destination from their home? Now, Let's quickly go back over the question and highlight what's important. So we've got that they are traveling at an average speed of 100 kilometers per hour on their trip from their home to the holiday destination. Now, the reason they're saying an average speed of 100 kilometers per hour is that it wouldn't be possible to be driving at 100 kilometers exactly per hour the whole time. But over the course of the journey, it averages to 100 kilometers per hour. Then it says, on their way home, their trip takes them 24 minutes less. And they drive home at an average speed of 110 kilometers per hour. The question asks, how far away is their holiday destination? Now, this question is fairly standard. And the way I'm going to show you to deal with it might be helpful to you for working with many different kinds of speed, distance, and time questions. So I already know about the speed and I know about the time. And the question is asking about the distance. So I like to set up a table. Now my two categories in my rows is going to be um, journey to holiday. And we have our journey to home. Now let's put in information they've given. They've given me speed. Now speed is in kilometers per hour. So the speed to their holiday is 100 kilometers per hour and their return speed is 110 kilometers per hour. Now the distance the distance on the way there and on the way back will be exactly the same. Also, the question asks me how far away is their holiday destination. So let's make my distance x. And for both of them, there'll be x because the distance will be equal to the holiday and back from the holiday. Now, the last category I need is time. Now, if I think about that triangle to help me remember how to work with the relationship between these three. Speed is distance over time. So time is distance out of speed. So my distance out of my speed, I don't have any information about the time, except that the one is 24 minutes less, will be x out of 100. And the time taken on the journey home will be x out of 110. Now, I've got all these situations here shown in this table. 
but I haven't yet used the fact that on the way back, it's 24 minutes less. So let's see, if I've got the time to holiday, I'll have to subtract 24 minutes from that to get my time to return home. Now, let's quickly go discuss units before we go on to answering this question or to setting up the equation. So if the speed was in kilometers per hour, the distance that you give will have to be given an answer in kilometers. And the time will need to be in hours. Now here they've given 24 minutes. That's not in the same unit as the rest of my equation. So I'm rather going to write that as 24 out of 60. Now I can fill in the other values. The time to the holiday is x out of 100 minus, and my time to home is x out of 110. Now since I've got an equation with a fraction, it'll help me to multiply by my lowest common denominator. And in this case, my lowest common denominator is 3,300. But if you made it 6,600, it wouldn't be a bad thing. You just land up having to divide by a little bit more later. So my lowest common denominator is 3,300. 160 and 110 all go into that. And I'm going to multiply each by my lowest common denominator. You've learned how to do that. So I'm going to get 33 times x minus 3,300 divided by 24 is 55. So 55 times 24. And 110 into 3,300 gives me um, 30. So that's going to give me 30x. Let's just simplify a little bit. Remember, you're allowed to use your calculator, so don't worry too much about these big values. So I get 3x is 1320, and I get x is 4, 440 kilometers. So, and that will be my final answer because it answers how far away is their holiday destination. So let's quickly go back over the strategy I used. Firstly, I went over the question and highlighted the important information. Then I set up a table comparing speed and distance and time. I made the, the thing that I want to know, the answer of the question, I made that X. And then I wrote my third category that I didn't yet know in terms of X. Then I could set up an equation because I know that the time to the holiday Minus 24 minutes will give me my time home. This lands up with an equation with a fraction, so I multiplied by my lowest common denominator, and I got that x is 440 kilometers. So that's a strategy you can help to use yourself to help you solve questions that have speed, distance, and time.